Today we're doing tracking. Uh, when puppy grows, I like to uh, play with, with the puppy by dropping some treats on the grass on my lawn uh, to teach him sniff. And uh, that's a really fun exercise for him and I do it occasionally. So uh, naturally, when they're very little, they just learn that it's a fun game to do. And then later on, when the dog is ready, I start teaching proper tracking. Uh, tracking is uh, great with Dobermans, they have great nose, sense of smell, they like sniffing. Um, and I think uh, if you have a pet and you uh, want to do uh, any type of uh, training for nose work, this is really interesting and, and challenging at the same time uh, thing to teach your dog because we humans, we don't know, we don't use nose uh, for scenting, but for dogs it's the major sense. Uh, and uh, so we humans have to figure out how to teach a dog something that we don't understand. So for that, um, it is very important in tracking to take your time, do not rush. Uh, first, let the dog figure it out. Secondly, never progress too fast. Repetition is the key. You have to repeat and do it an over and over and over again. And if you see that the dog struggles, step back in your process and start repeating again. So unlike with my uh, obedience exercise, when I see when the dog is ready, I move to the next step. With tracking, I really like to practice and practice and practice repetition. Um, when we track, it's better to go in the morning. Uh, you want to find uh, maybe a park or uh, another place. Mornings are usually best because over the night nobody was running on it. There were no footprints, so it's fresh. And uh, it's easier for the dog to start figuring out what you want from him. Because if you uh, go to the public park where there are a lot of smells and scents, it's very distracting to the dog. Plus, they won't really understand what, what you're doing with him, especially when the dog is so young. So uh, we start usually early in the mornings. Uh, if, for example, depending on the season of the year, if I start with grass, which uh, is what I'm doing with my dog currently, I stay with grass for a while until the dog knows what we're doing, until he understands to follow my scent, not the grass, and that takes a while. Um, if you live in the area where you have the plowed dirt and you start in that, just stick to that until the dog understands before start changing the terrains or changing the scenting area that they have to work with. So uh, first, uh, the treats. They always have to be soft because you don't want your dog to choke when they uh, excitingly searching for it and, and eating. So I use hot dogs and it has to be a high reward for the dog, something that they will eat for sure, will love to eat. Um, also another reason why we do it in the morning because the dog is not fed yet and they they uh, eager to have their food but instead of breakfast you kind of go and do the tracking first and then you go home and give the dog your, his food. Uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm showing uh, in the video how I uh, step on the grass. So the idea, the very first exercise that we have to do is sand pads. Because that's the way how we trans transfer our uh, knowledge to the dog that the scent, the, the sausage associated with the scent of the grass where you stepped on, the, the uh, uh, kind of stepped on grass. And so what you have to do is that uh, you can see behind I have uh, four flags. Um, I usually uh, select a, 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 right, um, a, a kind of an area of six feet in radius, about six feet in radius, in di diameter, sorry. And then I try to cover this whole area with my steps. So uh, every grass has to be kind of stepped on because it changes how the grass smells and that's what we need to, for the dog to learn eventually to identify the grass that is untouched versus the area that was uh, suppressed by the step. That's what they follow, they, they are able to identify that. And so at the beginning we obviously try to stimulate it with with the reward which is hot dog and then later on you fade it out and then the dog follows that scent that they understand. Uh, so I always do two scent pads every day, not every day, every training. 
uh, about the same size. Uh, I cover the whole area and then I drop the hot dogs and I step on hot dogs a little bit because I don't want them to be on, on the top for the dog to be visible because I want the dog to use nose, not, not his eyes. Um, and uh, I always have a little beginning pad right there. It's right by the flag. It's the size of my two footprints. And I put four or five so hot pieces of hot dog there. That's my starting point. So the dog is always eager to start that teaches the dog it's fun, here it is, and then the dog starts and then uh, uh, goes and search. Um, when the dog's searching, you will see I do not say anything, I do not help the dog, I don't control the dog, I let him figure out, let the dog do, do the natural work. And then when I see that he's nearly done with the hot dogs, because I know how, how much are there, or when I see that he's getting distracted, I pull him off the sun pad immediately because I want the dog to be only concentrated. If the dog lost concentration, I move away. That's it. And that's for that reason I always have two sun pads because puppies are small and they get distracted easily. So if I see that the first one didn't go well, I always have the second one. And at the same time, if the dog is happy and excited to do one, I stop it. I never wait until the dog is run out of rewards and he's searching, searching, there is nothing. You don't want that. You want to pull the dog off the uh, tracking pad before the, uh, he ran out of rewards. And then if the dog wants to continue, then you use the second pad. And my dog is very happy to do this, so I always do two. And so it's a double exercise for him. Uh, every time we do this, he loves it. And then. Uh, one other thing to keep in mind, before you start scent pad, make sure you uh, take the dog to do his business to potty because, again, you want the dog to have very good positive experience and if the dog was sitting in the car while you're doing the scent pad and then you pull it out to do the, the nose work but the dog needs to pee, he'll pee on the scent pad. That's not a very good experience for the dog, plus it's not what you want your dog to do. So make sure his needs are taken care of. Uh, if he needs water, give him water and then let him concentrate on this work. Um, let's see how my dog Atos will do today. You can see that the dog is wearing flat color and I have him on a long line. And you can see he's eager to start. I'll help him find, find the first pad, which is right here. Here, here, here. Good, good. I usually hold him to make sure he picks up everything from the pad. And then I let him go. You can see four flags, that's the boundaries of my circle. And you'll see how the dog steps out of the boundaries, but then he gets back, he figures it out by himself. I don't give any commands, and uh, we'll be doing this probably five, six, or maybe a dozen of times, just the circles before we move on to the next step.
Okay, he's way off. He figured out. Good boy. I'm gonna pull him off because he's nearly out of treats. Good. That's good. That's good. Good boy. You did well. You did well. Good boy. You did well. You know there is a second one. You do. Oh, good boy. Good boy. Good boy. What, you want to start your second one? Yeah? Yeah? Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Come on. Papa. Okay, just, hey, hey. No, pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention. Here, here. Good, here. Good. Sometimes I give him a break in between. But I figured I'll just film it together so you guys can see how he does. And if you, if during the training the dog got distracted by something like another dog running or a bird or something, do take a break between uh, starting the second circle because you, you want the dog to be focused and concentrated, not distracted, and if he's got excited by something different, then he needs time to come down. He's on fire today, likes it. When this is done, I always praise him. Okay, that's not good. Good boy, good boy. Okay, he quit by himself. That's not what I wanted. But he, since he quit, uh, I'm not letting him finish it. So that's it. Good boy, good boy. You're finished. Mama did good boy. You did well. You did well. Good boy. Good boy. And uh, I usually, uh, if, if the dog is very excited, then he's already happy. You don't need to do much. I uh, just walk him and let him sniff around or play maybe a little bit. Um, and I, I usually put him back in the car so he knows that this is the routine, the exercise he keeps sniffing, <laughs> thinking there is another one. Um, and so for us in the morning, that's the routine. You do tracking and that's it. So that's why the dog kind of by default, he learns that if we're going somewhere in the morning, that's going to be tracking. So he's already excited. So hope you can teach your dogs to track. Happy training.